uh, my involvement with Radiotron was as um, as a person that uh, rented a building to open up a cultural arts center for local youth. Uh, the actual name of the of the organization was Youth Break Center, but since they filmed the movies Breaking One and Electric Boogaloo there. Uh, it got the name Radiotron actually from the movie because they painted uh, the backdrop uh, on the stage was was Radiotron and the kids always wanted to call it Radiotron even though I told them no it's Youth Break Center they're like no it's Radiotron so in 83 when I opened the, the youth center uh, hip hop was just coming to the west coast uh, kids were break dancing uh, rapping, DJing, uh, graffiti, the influence of, of New York subway art had reached LA. I mean, we've always had graffiti, you know, graffiti is like, probably graffiti since the beginning of time, you know, since the cave, <laughs> since the cave paintings and just man's urge to leave a mark. But since we didn't have subways in LA, kids were going to like abandoned yards and they call those, those urban galleries yards starting with the Belmont Tunnel which was really one of the first yards in LA on the west coast uh, there was a crew um, uh, LA bomb squad and it was run by Shandu and uh, Risco and crime so so now back to Radiotron what it what it was since uh, since I opened the center for kids to be able to break dance or pop lock or pop uh, DJ rap and do graffiti. Um, I actually allow them to paint graffiti all around the building, inside, outside. A lot of crews actually form there, like K2S and STN. M MAK used to work out of there and many others. So it was a very non-traditional in the way that I didn't have specific times. It wasn't like you do half hour of break dancing, then half hour of graffiti art, and then half hour of rapping. It was an open space where young people could go and if they felt like just dancing all day, you know, for a couple of hours and work out, that'd be fine, you know. Uh, they can dabble at different, different elements of hip hop or if they weren't feeling good that day and they just wanted to hang out and maybe talk to somebody. Uh, my mom was always on hand. They called her Mama Breaker and she was always on hand to offer advice or or they could speak to myself or, or to my partner at the time, um, Cynthia. Uh, we were a family and uh, the Youth Break Center, Radiotron was a family owned business and that's how we ran it. Radiotron um, has, has um, evolved into different uh, um, facets. Uh, in the 90s, Little Caesar started a Radiotron that was about battling. It was only battling, like the breakdance battles, pop, pop locking, popping battles, mainly breakdancing since the Little Caesar is a breakdancer, a b-boy and uh, from um, Air Force crew. So he focused on, on Rayotron as a place where uh, people come and battle. And uh, then in uh, 2013, uh, the Levitt Pavilion gave me an opportunity to do an anniversary show. Uh, it was a 30th anniversary show, and it was intergenerational. I mean, it was, very, it, became, it was very popular because of the fact that a lot of the people that came out of the 80s, now they had children and even grandchildren. So it was a great opportunity for, for people to gather, plus it was free, and it was in a, outside, um, and we showcase some of the old school artists, but also, uh, letting new artists have an opportunity to open up and, uh, and to showcase up and coming talent. So what's happened now, now that we're in the 2021, um, I'm a part of an organization called Generation Hip Hop Global. We have 66 chapters around the world. It's based in, it's based in South Africa. The, the chairman of the board is Nomni Mandela, the grandson of Nelson Mandela. And um, it's, uh, the directors are um, Terence Berry and um, Raquel Delgado. So 
what I love about Generation Hip Hop Global is that it's connecting people from different countries and all for the same purpose and goal of giving space and a voice to young people through hip hop, but also connecting with each other, having a dialogue. Uh, there's chapters in, in Europe, in, in Spain, in France, in, uh, in England, um, in Latin America, the, in Mexico, in El Salvador, in Guatemala, in Ecuador, in Brazil, South America. Um, it's, it's a global movement and it's beautiful because they're able to, those that can have access to internet, they're able to see each other. But somehow, because people will have, find a phone with a camera somewhere and record and then find a way to put it online so we get to see what other people are doing. Uh, all throughout Africa and other, other countries of Africa as well, uh, you see young people um, even dancing on, like on dirt, like literally just wherever they can. But it's beautiful to see their spirit. Uh, Generation Hip Hop had asked me to do a Radiotron in different countries. But then, you know, we had to change plans because of COVID. But I still have a vision of, of going to different countries and bringing Radiotron, which means having a space, you know, uh, helping countries to create their space. They don't have to call it Radiotron. They can name it whatever they want. But the idea is to create a space. And as I mentioned in the beginning that in 1973, Cool Hurt, uh, he hosted a, a party for his sister in a space. And I think that people take for granted the, the necessity of space. Like, I really believe that, that, that space is the sixth element of hip hop. Say the fifth is knowledge. Well, I think the sixth is space.